let's see what a little bit of a launch feels like. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. So what is special about this vehicle is that it takes the engine out of the GT3, the 911 GT3, and they put it inside of the Cayman. So that is a four liter flat six, naturally aspirated revs to 9,000 RPM and making 493 horsepower. And as you can see, we are on a track. However, as you can also see, I am not wearing a helmet. So we're going to be treating this like I'm driving on a road. I've already done uh, some nice, healthy track stints on it where I really pushed the vehicle to get to know the car. So now we're just going to be talking about it, what it's like, some of the engineering behind it, and what it's like to drive. So this engine, 493 horsepower. Now you'll notice it's about 10 horsepower down from the 911 GT3. So did they intentionally detune this? No, that's not what happened. So what happens is they've turned the engine and the transmission 180 degrees. So the engine is now in the middle rather than at the rear. And that means you have a different exhaust pass. So you have to turn that exhaust around. When you turn that exhaust around, you then have to route it up and over those rear axles. And as a result of that pathway, you have some additional pressure losses in that exhaust. Uh, it's basically unavoidable because of the bend you have to make within it. And so as a result, you make just slightly less power. Certainly still plenty, uh, and it is a very noticeable difference from the GT4. You've got individual throttle bodies with this engine. It is extraordinarily responsive, and I think uh, that's probably the biggest thing that you notice is the amount of control that you have with this engine with the throttle and with the combination of this just beautifully tuned, naturally aspirated engine. There's two things that I think this car does really well that many modern cars do not, uh, and it's almost EV-like in that sense, and what I mean by that is you have really good response. So when you put your foot down, you get that power very quickly. You also get exactly what you asked for. So if you ask for 50%, you get 50%, 100%, you get 100%. So it, it does that very quickly and you don't have really any perception of a delay aside from a gear change if you're sitting in a low gear like I am now. But in a track situation where you've got it in the correct gear, the second you put your foot down, you get that power. And when you're at 60%, you ask for 100%, you get that immediately. And that is something that you know is rare in the combustion world um, and Porsche just nails it with this engine so I really like the responsiveness from the engine as far as the acceleration 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds so versus the standard GT4 with a manual transmission this is a full second faster to 100 kilometers per hour and versus the GT4 with PDK this is half a second faster to uh, 100 kilometers per hour and so that's two reasons a significantly more power and also more aggressive gearing finally uh, I think everyone's prayers have been heard in that we have a very aggressive gearbox in a Cayman GT4 this is what Porsche says is the most aggressive gearing used in any Porsche GT car. So this is the gearbox out of the 911 GT3 RS, the previous generation, and they've stuck it in here, matched with, of course, that engine. And so you might wonder, okay, is it that simple? It's not that simple. So when you turn the engine and the transmission around, making mid-engine car instead of a rear-engine car, that, of course, means turning the transmission around, which means you would have seven reverse gears, not seven forward gears. So is, there is some rework involved in making this transmission work, uh, but it is a very aggressive transmission and the car has more power. And so as a result, it is significantly quicker. I mean, zero to 60 and 3.2 seconds. Again, going back to this, it's almost EV-like, and this is a combustion engine we're talking about. So it's rear wheel drive, and it's getting these insane zero to 60 times with a combustion engine and it has this insane response with a combustion engine so it's kind of showing you that a combustion engine can do it all uh, in this day and age with all the modern engineering and tuning that goes into it. 
Now, the top speed of this vehicle is 196 miles per hour. And I asked Porsche, hey, well, like, were you targeting anything? Was 200 miles per hour in consideration? And they said, no, we don't really care what the top speed is for this car. We're just trying to make it, you know, a really fun, really enjoyable car to drive. And, you know, the top speed is simply a factor of how much power does it have? What are the aerodynamic drag? And what's your gearing? And so as far as the gearing in the standard GT4, you reach your top speed in sixth gear, and then you have a seventh gear as an overdrive. And this car, again, going back to that aggressive gearing, which I love, they're giving you your top speed in your final gear. So you're reaching that in seventh gear, and that 196 mile per hour is simply a factor of, you know, how much power do you make, how much drag do you have, and your gear ratio. So that's where you end now at 196 miles per hour. So we've talked about the engine, we've talked about the transmission, moving to the differential. It uses a mechanical limited slip differential. They did look into potentially using an electronic style limited slip diff. Uh, ultimately, that would mean changing the entire transmission housing, and there was a lot of rework required. And then you start to get into GT3 territory, so they thought, you know, for the scope of this project, that didn't make sense to do. They're trying to keep this thing kind of pure, kind of analog, uh, a driver's machine, and not kind of broaden the scope of the project way too wide. So from those differentials going out to the wheels and brakes, the brakes are larger than the GT4 and they have also changed the rear caliper pistons in order to improve trail braking. They've also increased the precision of the ABS system. Now as far as the tires, this is the first time in a Cayman you can get Michelin Cup 2R tires. So extremely grippy tires uh, finally offered on the Cayman GT4 and these are Porsche specific tires so they've worked with Michelin hand in hand in order to create uh, you know the the right compound and the right features of this tire to suit this vehicle as far as the wheels it comes standard with aluminum wheels you can also get optional magnesium wheels and Porsche was asked you know why uh, not use something like carbon fiber and I thought they had a really interesting response as far as using carbon fiber for wheels Several things made them concerned first of all brake temperatures getting into you know 800 degrees C or so that Heat can damage those wheels. It's not good for carbon fiber to get really really hot uh, In addition to that these are track cars, right? Like these are meant to be thrown around on a track and you might find yourself in a gravel pit and that gravel can then hit that carbon fiber it could cause internal damage that you don't see and then you're you know reducing uh, the the structural integrity of that wheel and you may not be able to actually know that visually looking at it and then finally and I thought this was really interesting carbon fiber requires a bit larger spokes so you can't have these thin very aesthetically pleasing spokes like you have with the aluminum or with the magnesium wheels and it really does look good especially with those center caps and you've kind of freed up that real estate to make a good looking wheel so this GT4 RS is 23.6 seconds faster on the Nürburgring than the GT4. And there's a lot of reasons for that. It has significantly more power, has better tires, has better gearing, has better suspension. Uh, Porsche says the Cup 2R tires versus a Cup 2 tire are worth about five to six seconds on the Nürburgring alone. Pretty impressive what you're getting out of these tires. Now, as far as the suspension, uh, this is really a no compromise kind of track focused suspension here where they have nearly doubled the rear spring rate stiffness and more than doubled the front spring rate stiffness. Uh, so quite a bit stiffer than the GT4. And what I've been surprised by is, you know, yes, this is a smooth track and you're not really going to notice it all that much compared to a harsh, bumpy road. But the ride is actually pretty well controlled and that's what you can do with modern damping. You know, they've got different damping se settings you can select here and it is really impressive to me how stiff these springs are and yet, you know, how comfortable this has been going around the track. You also have all ball joints uh, for the suspension. So, you know, they're not really compromising in terms of comfort. If there was a decision to be made between, hey, do we make the car more comfortable or do we make it more fun to drive, make it more sporty to drive, it always went towards more sporty. I mean, that's why you have these like, you know, little straps for handles, right? The compromise is made to make this thing more fun to drive. That's the name of the game. That's part of why you have this airbox right behind me that's exposed and I get to listen to this engine when I put my foot down. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful sound, 
and it's right in your face because it's right there. And Porsche said that was one of the biggest challenges in developing this car because that could also provide you know negative sounds to you so what they really had to focus on is making sure that you got the joy from that engine uh, but you didn't hear the bad parts i mean this is a large surface area and you've got these six pistons pumping it kind of acts like a subwoofer uh, and so they had to do a lot of tuning with this uh, you know air filter cover to make sure that these materials didn't cause bad vibrations and cause you know that loud uh, subwoofer sound within the cabin depending on where your foot is on this throttle so it's pretty clever and the end result is you get to hear beautiful engine sounds right inside here i mean it's in your face <laughs> Now, as far as the car overall, this vehicle weighs about 50 pounds less than the standard GT4. So they have taken weight out. There's a lot of use of CFRP throughout the vehicle, whether that's up front or the rear wing, using that for the seats as well. A big focus on getting the weight out and you know making sure lightweight just makes everything better, right? Even the rear windshield is thinner in order to pull some weight out. Now, as far as aerodynamics, this does have more downforce than the standard GT4. The way Porsche talks about it, basically, if you take all of the adjustments uh, that you can make with the downforce, whether that's up front with the diffuser or the rear wing, you can maximize the downforce at basically the low downforce setting of the Porsche GT3. And so their thinking is, you know, they want this to be more of, you know, a friendly, approachable, it's not as reliant on downforce. It's still fun out on the road, where you can't rely on downforce, uh, whereas the GT3 has more downforce, making it a more capable track car at higher speeds. Up front, you will notice two NACA ducts on the hood. Those are feeding air to cool the front brakes. And if you go towards the back, you will notice uh, the swan neck uh, supports for the rear wing. And I asked Porsche about this, you know, why do you change this? Basically, if you have the supports underneath, uh, it influences the downforce a bit. So they explained it as, you know, if you look at a plane, the plane has the engines beneath the wing. Uh, and that's for multiple reasons. But part of that is the top of the wing is doing a lot of the lift. And a wing on a car is that upside down, right? So the bottom of the wing is the important part. So by supporting it from the top and having cleaner airflow beneath that wing, where it kind of comes back together after it's passed that swan neck support, you have that laminar flow underneath the spoiler and that gives you better, cleaner downforce. So as far as some differences mechanically of this versus a 911 GT3, two of the things that the GT3 has that this does not, the GT3 has rear wheel steering and the GT3 has a double wishbone rear suspension. This is using McPherson struts front and rear. And so the double wishbone gives you a bit more predictability at the limit with that GT3 and you also have the advantage of that rear wheel steering. But as far as the overall, you know, what is this thing like to drive? It's exceptional, it's truly exceptional. I mean, I have a hard time finding faults. Uh, the response is the biggest thing that I really appreciate about it in that you don't have to wait for things that you're asking for. I mean, when you're putting this in the, the proper track modes and you're really going for it, everything happens exactly when you want it to happen. It's very predictable to drive. Uh, it can get a little playful. I was very impressed with the front end grip. You know, this was, you can get those front tires overheated and start to get a bit of understeer, but I found myself continuing to turn the wheel in more and it still had more and it would still turn in more. And it was like, wow, like the front end grip is really good. The ability of this thing to corner the handling is there and it's very responsive and that's what I like and that goes hand in hand with that throttle control that is so good and as a result you know you just feel so connected because of the responsiveness and it really is the same story with the brakes I mean the brakes feel really good as far as the steering the steering is light um, there's no modes right there's one set setting Porsche says we think this is good and that's what it is I like that about it uh, it's light but it's also communicative and you know what's happening with your front tires. You can kind of feel that lightness as you start to understeer. You can feel it build as you go into the corner. So the steering feels good to me, uh, though it is fairly light. 
But if I had to come up with one downside, it's not with this car, but with every other Cayman out there. This vehicle proves that the Cayman can use more aggressive gearing. And it's using more aggressive gearing with a more powerful engine. Usually you get the opposite. If you don't have much power, you have to use really aggressive gearing so that you can, you know, get some decent acceleration. This car does both things to make it faster. Shorter gears and more power. So it shows that every other Cayman could get away with significantly shorter gearing, uh, but they don't do it. They don't give you that. So that is my complaint. Let the other Caymans uh, have some fun as well. The gearing in this is fantastic. The engine in this is exceptional. Overall, driving this thing on the track, it's wonderful. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.